everyone, let's talk about how you can predict single and double displacement reactions. In order to do that, one of the first things you need to be able to do is recognize what a single displacement reaction is and what a double displacement reaction is. So here is a partially filled in version of that same worksheet. So you can see a little more clearly, our double displacement reactions are the ones that involve two compounds, whereas if it's a pure element reactor of the compound, we're gonna call that a single displacement reaction. So note these, double displacement because it's two compounds, double displacement because it's two compounds, single displacement because it's an element of compound, two compounds, two compounds, two compounds, element plus compound, element plus compound, yes, F2 is an element because it's only got one kind of atom in it, two compounds, and this is one element plus one compound. It doesn't matter whether the element is placed first or placed second, it doesn't change anything. It's element plus compound is single displacement. So let's go through each of these then and talk about how you would predict the actual product. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the single displacement reactions first, and then we'll do the double displacement reactions. So this is the same things, just made into a bigger size to make it easier to see. And again, let's do the single displacement reactions first. Remember that when predicting the outcome of a reaction, you need to follow the same three steps always, which is step one, switch the parts, step two, fix the formulas, step three, balance the equation. So let's talk about how you do that with this single displacement reaction. So switching the parts means the pure element will switch places with the element that is like it. Now zinc makes a positive ion, hydrogen makes a positive ion. It's not positive because it's at the front of the formula too. So the zinc and the hydrogen will switch places with each other. That means hydrogen comes out to become the pure element and then zinc pairs with the phosphate. So this is the switching the parts, we've done it. Next, we need to fix the formulas. So hydrogen, when it's a pure element, is H2 because it's a diatomic element, Hofbrinkle. So H2. As for zinc, we have to keep in mind that zinc is a plus two and phosphate is a minus three charge. So if you put the two together, you've got three zincs and two phosphates. So let's make that correct. Two phosphates, three zincs. All right, so that is how you predict the outcome for this one in terms of, okay, we switched the parts, we fixed the formulas, step three, balance. So let's see, there are two phosphates. Let's put a two here, that way it's two phosphates here also. That's two times three is six hydrogens. Let's put a three here because it's six hydrogens. By the way, if I'd have started with hydrogen instead of phosphate, I would have said, put this two right here and see this three subscript, put this three over here. That way you wind up with six hydrogen, six hydrogen, and that would have also fixed the phosphate problem because two phosphate and two phosphate. Anyway, three zinc, three zinc, and there you go. That's how you have the full balanced equation. Let's look at another single displacement reaction. So let's jump down away. So this double, double, double. Here's a single displacement reaction. Let's do this one. So for the same thing you're gonna see happening here, like switches with like. So the pure element is sodium, that's a metal, it's a positive ion. Iron is also a positive ion. So the sodium goes here and the iron goes here, meaning that you now have sodium paired with sulfate and you have iron by itself as a pure element. So what we're gonna do is note that pure iron has that formula and that's fine. But the formula of this, because like I said, we switched the parts and I gotta fix the formula. The formula of this has gotta be fixed because sodium is a one plus charge and sulfate is a two minus charge. So you're gonna have two sodiums and one sulfate there. So I'll put a two right there to fix the formula. So there we go, we've switched the parts and fixed the formulas, now we balance. One sulfur, one sulfur, one iron, one iron, two sodiums, two sodiums, and that's it, we've got it. Next, let's do this one. So, we have a pure element and a compound. Now, you should switch this fluorine with the other thing that's like it, so the fluorine does not replace the iron. Fluorine, when it becomes an ion, is negative. Chlorine is also negative when it becomes an ion. So the fluorine and the chlorine switch places with each other, which means the iron is now paired with the fluorine, and the chlorine is now by itself. So we switch the parts, like replaces like. Okay, so that's part one. Part two, fix the formulas. 
chlorine is a diatomic element, just like fluorine is F2 when it's by itself, chlorine is Cl2 when it's by itself. As for this one, note that iron is a transition metal with a variable charge. So FeCl3 is, has that form because iron has a certain charge, and unless otherwise specified, we assume that whatever charge iron starts with, it ends with, and that will determine what formula you get here. So we need to figure the charge of iron here so that we know what formula to make here. So we're going to do that by saying each chlorine is a minus 1, and there's three chlorines for a total minus 3 charge, which means the iron must match it by being a plus 3. Therefore, this iron is a plus 3 charge. So if you have iron with a plus 3 charge and you put it with fluorine that has a minus charge, the formula will have one iron and three fluorines. So it will look like that. Now, that being what it is, let's balance this. So one iron, one iron, three chlorine, two chlorine. So let's take this two and put it here and take this three and put it here. That way you have six chlorine and six chlorine. Now you've got two irons, so let's put a two right here because it's now two irons. But that also makes six fluorine. How do you make six fluorine? Well, you put this three right here, and that's six fluorine. So six fluorine, six fluorine, two iron, two iron, six chlorine, six chlorine. And now we have a fully balanced correct equation. All right, let's do the last single displacement reaction on this worksheet. And once again, like replaces like. Strontium is a metal with a positive charge, so is silver. So strontium will pair with the chlorate. So there's strontium paired with the chlorate, and then silver will be a pure element by itself. So let's do that now. Let's figure out, we've switched the parts, now let's figure out the formulas. Strontium is a plus two, chlorate is a minus one charge, so you're going to have one strontium and two chlorates in the formula. So let's put that correct, one strontium and two chlorates. And there, having done that, now we can balance. So let's see, what does that make? That makes... One silver, one silver, one chlorate, two chlorates. Oh, we can't do that, so you got to put a two right here, which means there's a two right here. So two silver, two silver, two chlorate, two chlorate, one strontium, one strontium, and there we go. We're now done. So that finishes out the single displacement reactions. Let's do double displacement reactions. That means going back to number one here. So with these, you likewise switch the parts, fix the formula, and then balance. So in this case, there's no pure elements, so it's just switching the part means I put the calcium here and the sodium here. So now instead of sodium bromide, it's calcium plus bromine, and then the other one is going to be sodium plus hydroxide. we got to check on the formulas, though, because we've switched the parts. Now we've got to make the formulas correct. Calcium is a plus 2. Bromine is a minus 1. So that means you have two bromines and one calcium. So that's the correct formula. And then as for the sodium hydroxide, sodium is a plus one, hydroxide is a minus one. So that's uh, one sodium and one hydroxide. So that means that's the correct formula. So we switch the parts, fix the formulas, now we balance. So one sodium, one sodium, one bromine, two bromines. Oh, we got to put a two here, therefore. And if there's two sodiums, you got to put a two here. One calcium, one calcium, two hydroxide, two hydroxide. Yes, this two means that there's two hydroxides. So that's actually done. We've balanced. Next. Magnesium and manganese are going to switch places. So manganese here, magnesium goes here. So now we're going to have manganese paired with the iodine, and we're going to have magnesium paired with the sulfite. So let's find the correct formulas. Manganese is a transition metal. So MnSO32, we got to figure out what charge manganese has here. That way we can figure out what charge, because it'll be the same charge here, and that'll tell us what formula it takes. So sulfite is a minus 2 charge, and there's two of them, so minus 2 times 2 is a total of negative 4 charge. The manganese must balance it by being a plus 4. Therefore, it's manganese plus 4, and we're going to pair that with iodine being a minus 1. So that means the formula is going to have 1 manganese and 4 iodine. So there we go, 1 manganese and 4 iodine. Next, magnesium plus sulfite. Magnesium is a 2 plus. Sulfite is a 2 minus. So that means 2 magnesiums and 2 sulfites. And if you have Mg2SO32, a 2 to 2 ratio is a 1 to 1 ratio. So it's just MgSO3. 
So that actually is the correct formula, MgSO3. Now we can balance. Four iodines, two iodines, let's put a two here. Now it's four and four for iodine. Magnesium. Oops, I just realized all this time I wasn't paying attention and had the manganese written the wrong way. So oopsie do. Anyway, um, the one magnesium, one ma or one manganese, one manganese is good, but two magnesium, two magnesium, we gotta put a two here. And that works because now we got two sulfites. So that actually does complete it. All right, now on to the next double displacement reaction. HBr, OH3. So this is positive, this is positive. They'll switch places with each other. So aluminum pairs with bromine, hydrogen pairs with OH. So aluminum pairs with bromine and hydrogen pairs with OH. So for the aluminum, which is a plus three and bromine is a minus one, you get three bromines and one aluminum for this formula. As for HOH, please note that this is H2O. In other words, it's just water. So I'm gonna actually change this to be just water. Okay, so given that, you now say uh, one aluminum, one aluminum. There's three oxygens here, so I gotta put a three here so that there can be three oxygens here also. And then this is six hydrogen and three bromines, so let's put a three here. That way it's three bromines, three bromines, and this makes three hydrogen plus three more is six. So now we have equal numbers of everything on each side. It is now balanced. Next, sodium phosphate and potassium hydroxide. The sodium goes with the hydroxide, the potassium goes with the sodium. So you get potassium phosphate and sodium hydroxide. So potassium is a plus, phosphate is a three minus, so you're gonna get three potassiums and one phosphate in the formula, so K3PO4. And then sodium hydroxide, sodium is a plus, hydroxide is a minus, one sodium, one hydroxide, so that's correct. So there you go, we switch the parts, we fix the formulas, next what we do is we balance. So three sodiums, three sodiums, one phosphate, one phosphate, three potassium, three potassium, three hydroxide, three hydroxide. That's it, we're good. Now, next one, magnesium chloride, lithium carbonate. So magnesium and lithium switch places. So instead of magnesium chloride, now you got lithium chloride. And then instead of magnesium being with chloride, now it's with the carbonate, so MgCO3. Now we checked for the formulas. We switched the parts. Lithium is a plus, chlorine is a minus. So we're gonna have one chlorine and one lithium in the formula. In other words, that's correct. As for magnesium, which is a 2 plus, it's going to pair with carbonate, which is a 2 minus. So that's uh, two magnesiums and two carbonates, which makes, if it's a 2 to 2 ratio, Mg2CO3 CO, reduces to MgCO3. A 2 to 2 ratio becomes a 1 to 1 ratio. So what that means is that this is the correct formula. So one magnesium, one magnesium. Two chlorine, two chlorine. Two lithium, two lithium, one carbonate, one carbonate. That's it. We're done for this particular question. Let's do the last one, a final double displacement reaction. So for this one, uh, once again, the potassium and the beryllium will switch places. So now instead of potassium with nitrate, now it's beryllium with the nitrate. And instead of potassium with the nitrate, now it's with the fluoride. So beryllium and nitrate. So beryllium is a plus two, nitrate is a minus. So you're gonna have one beryllium and two nitrates in the formula. So this is how we show one beryllium and two nitrates. As for potassium fluoride, potassium is a plus, fluorine is a minus. So one potassium, one fluorine. So this is the correct formula. We therefore can say that one beryllium balances with one beryllium. Actually, maybe I'll start here. One potassium with one potassium, one nitrate, two nitrates. Oh, let's make that a two then. Well, if we have two potassiums, we better put a two here. That makes two potassiums. We also got two fluorines, and that's good, two fluorines, and then one beryllium. So, hey, we're good. That's it. We're balanced. So, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. Again, that's the whole overview of the front of the back half. And here's the overview of the whole front half. And that's it. Happy studies.